Well, hi there, Leo. This is Cindy from the New Moon Tarot, and this is a general love reading for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Leo for the week of May 1st. If this one doesn't resonate so much, go ahead and check out your natal chart and my other readings, specifically your moon, which is emotions, and Venus, which is how you show up in relationships. You might want to do that anyway, since there could be messages there for you. We are looking at the overall energy. I'm also going to pull cards for your person and clarify everything in real time. Yes, that means shuffling. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want the extended, go ahead and click the join button down below. It's $10. You get access to all of the extendeds for every sign for an entire month. If you would like your own private reading, you can find all of my info down below in the description box. My least expensive is 20. I'm also running a couple of specials on readings right now, including 10 questions for $66. So I doubt you're in communication with this person at this moment. We have the hermit Virgo energy. The hermit is feeling like a sense of disconnect. I'm going within, I'm consulting my higher self, my wiser self. Um, it's about self-reflection, um, like perfecting oneself. You can see the light around her face. She's getting some clarity here. And the four of swords is often about a break from somebody. It's being quiet. I'm gathering up my thoughts. I'm doing some healing, you know, working on myself a little bit. And then to back that up, we have the page of cups in reverse. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. This is blocked communication, communication not going through. Pages are often about messages. And then we have the queen of cups in reverse. Cancer specifically, but also Scorpio, also Pisces. So you could be dealing with a water sign here. Or it's a sense of like being emotionally overwhelmed, struggling with emotions here. So I, I think there's somebody, like, they're not talking to you, you're not talking to them. This is the overall energy, so it could be either one of you, and maybe struggling with emotions. Let's check out your person. All right, so we've got the Ten of Swords here. That is an ending with someone, uh, aces start cycles, tens end cycles, and this is like I have lingering questions about what happened. I'm also in my head about a situation you may have had a very painful ending with this person. So this is the Light Seer's Tarot. I'm going to use the Tarot of Mystical Moments in a second to clarify. At the end, I'm going to pull a card for how this person feels about you as well as an Oracle card as necessary. Hmm. Well, we've got the fool in reverse. Fool in reverse is feeling foolish. Uh, it's also someone who may be scared. Um, the fool is often about like taking a risk and kind of trusting in yourself and the universe. This is like, I don't want to feel foolish. I'm scared. It can also mean someone who tried to make a fool out of you. Hmm. Three of swords. Ouch. Uh, that's pain, it's sadness, um, a disappointment in love, a breakup. There's some swords here. This person's probably in their head about the situation. They're probably trying to figure some stuff out. Hmm. And the five of swords. That's a, a fight with someone. It can also mean someone who wasn't completely honest with you. Um, they may not have been honest with themselves. It can mean an inner conflict, an outer conflict, usually around something that someone says or the communication that happened in a relationship. Heavy energy here. I You're not speaking, but this person is definitely keeping you in mind here. We've got the moon, Cancer, and Pisces. This is probably the most psychological card in the deck. It's all about our fears, our worries, our anxieties. It's like things that we keep hidden, things that we don't necessarily deal with. Got the six of wands in reverse. Ouch. They feel defeated. They feel 
like you're ignoring them or they're ignoring you. Yeah, this isn't going particularly well. So let's clarify this a little bit. Okay, we've got the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Knight of Pentacles is Virgo energy in particular. It's also Capricorn and Taurus. In the reverse is a sense of like, I don't, I don't have a plan. I have analysis paralysis. I think they're kind of losing it a little bit. Um, there's like a sense of despair here. We've got the King of Swords, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. So you could be dealing with an air sign. Again, we have a lot of like cards about being up in their head. Maybe they're trying to be logical here. It could also be someone who's been cold in the past. They've been very head over heart. They're just not very warm and not very emotional. And we've got this Ace of Cups in reverse. The Ace of Cups is having a lot of emotion for someone. It's falling in love with someone. In the reverse, it's a missed opportunity for love. Um, and I do think this person is struggling with their emotions. They got the Queen of Cups in reverse. We've got the Moon here and then the Ace of Cups in reverse. It can also mean like someone who's feeling emotionally drained, kind of exhausted. And sometimes there's like a need for alone time when that happens, just because the emotions are just overwhelming. See, and then we've got the emperor in reverse, Aries energy. That is being chaotic or feeling like things are unraveling here. They're kind of losing their ish here. They're not, they're not doing well. Let's do one more. Yeah, and then we've got the Hierophant in reverse. That is Taurus and Libra energy. It's a sense of like a chaotic energy. It can also mean someone who's like a rebel and they don't want to settle down. I'm feeling more like this person is lacking the structure. It is also possible that you were married to this person or engaged to this person or had a kid here. The Emperor's pretty serious and so is the Hierophant. It's often about making a commitment. Or it's someone who's having like some struggles with commitments. All right, um, let's do a card for feelings. Okay, so what about this person's feelings for you currently? Mm. We've got the three of swords. Let's do another one. Ooh, okay, and we've got the Ten of Swords. So like neither one of these look particularly good. Ouch. I think this person is hurting. I think they're losing their stuff. I think they're in pain. I think they're wounded. Um, they are not doing well, but I don't see any movement towards you. It's more of a mental, energetic uh, kind of a connection between the two of you right now. Ouch, 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 ouch. Let's do an oracle card here. All right, what is something that you need to know? I'm using the Queen of the Moon oracle. Hmm. All right, we've got Surrender, and it showed up with the Void. It's a two for one. Okay, let's do the Dark Moon first, the Void. Your time to rest and reset is here. Release all that does not serve you. Stop resisting. The void is a time of possibility, not just darkness. There is nothing to fear in letting go of negative patterns and habits. So let go of the old. This is like it just to kind of accept it. Um, just kind of be in it. All right. This is the power of the dark moon. It is the optimum time in the cycle to release the old and cut the cords of relationships and traumas that deserve no time and attention. There may be some things about this connection that are not healthy, that are not good. I would say that this isn't over given like the Four of Swords is usually a break card for me, but maybe this is a necessary moment here where you can kind of get rid of some gunk basically that you've been carrying around and the person's been carrying around. And we have surrender. Surrendering doesn't mean giving up. Let go of what you no longer need. You see a theme here? 
Stop being so stubborn about holding on to aspects and behaviors that don't align with who you are now. Stop struggling. And maybe like they're, they're struggling, maybe you're struggling right now, and that's what's keeping the two of you in this phase. Remember, this moon phase is dark and beautiful. It casts a protective shadow that allows us to be as wide open as we need to be to do our work. We reveal safely to only the divine in ourselves, and then the light returns. So this is this is like a dark period right now, but it's not going to last. It never lasts. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. The joy doesn't last, and neither does the tough times. We're in a constant state of change. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. If you want the extended, click the join button. We're going to do feelings, the intentions, the advice, the unknown, because I don't think that this is over. And if you'd like to order your own private reading, you can find that in the description. Um, my least expensive is $20, but I'm also running a couple of specials if you would like one of those. All right, blessed be.